Daddy said you're a gift from up above If you set your standards high Just set them high on love Set them high on love Set them high on love And set them high on love And set them high on love Just set them high on love Podcasting from a town called Manalapan, New Jersey, this is That Oneness Guy, a podcast covering the many aspects and elements that embody oneness. I am your host, Danny Rongo. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. As an author, playwright, singer, songwriter, and activist, I am spreading my message of oneness, like I always say, folks, basically to anyone who will listen. First, as always, for those who are not aware, my book, the book that these podcasts derive from, I am God, and so are you, my friend, a common man's guide to oneness. With thanks to my publisher, Balboa Press, which is a division of the world leader in spirituality publications, Hay House Incorporated, this book is available everywhere. It's in a hardcover form, paperback, and ebook formats, and you can find it anywhere on the world via all of your major retailers like Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, etc., or you can always visit the website for my book, which is www.iamgodbook.com. I'd like to introduce you to the track you just heard here first up. Uh, that's a song featured on my CD, One Bass, One Voice, Simply One Song. And the song is called Set Them High on Love. It's a song for our daughters, our nieces, our granddaughters. It reminds them that as they go through life, especially in their early years, when they're just starting to figure out where and how to place the standards that they'll base their life upon, and to never, ever waver when it comes to love, and to always place that standard very high on their list. So as you know, this and all of my music can be found on either my website, dannyrongo.com, iTunes, Amazon, or any of your favorite downloading sites. And as you know by now, I will also close out this episode with another section of that song. So, let's get right to podcasting. You're listening to episode number 12, Where Oneness Leads. As we move along here in season number two of these podcast episodes... I want to continue along the same lines that I initiated when I started this specific season, and that is to go a little deeper, to delve into the ideology of oneness, if you may, because at this point of the conversation, there's a distinct need to, and you sense that from the first three episodes of this season that started off with episode number nine, which was called, Let's Address the Blasphemous Elephant in the Room, right? And then into episode number 10, which was called Religion, Spirituality, Where Does Oneness Fit In? And then finally to the most recent episode, which is episode number 11, which challenged you by asking, are your beliefs your own or what you were taught? So I only think that it's natural to follow those three specific topics with where we are right now in the conversation, and that is right here with episode number 12, Where Oneness Leads. Okay. As we become more comfortable with oneness, we find that we now live our lives from a foundation of peace and love, which makes perfect sense, right? Think about it for a second. Because now we know that we are inherently bonded together by our divine source. We know that because of that statement and fact. The energies, or as I call them in the book, stevels, S-T-E-V-L-S, that provide for this world, provide for us as well, right? Now from that, we now feel naturally more at ease. It is from that relief of stress that we now find our lives being lived from the foundation of peace and love. 
Now, while the world around us may remain in its current tumultuous state, which we know it does, because we are now at ease, we have a more peaceful way to process it all. Hey, now, I know exactly what is going on in our world, and it scares the hell out of me. And like all of us, I was sickened to wake up on Easter Sunday morning just the other day to hear the horrible news of the events in Sri Lanka. But as we come to terms with oneness, and from oneness understand how important acceptance is, we can learn to better deal with what goes on. You see, my friends, I get torn a lot. You see, my wife Andrea hates when I turn on the news the first thing in the morning. I understand why, and, and she has a point. It's because there's never anything good on the news, right? But from my 30 years on Wall Street, I developed a kind of need to see what's going on in the world. A part of me likes to think that, hey, I'm still on top of things, right? But when story after story is nothing but tragedy, hatred, and catastrophe, it really does weigh on your being. It's weighed on mine for many years to the point that I, I actually uh, approached a boiling point in my own life. It was probably about five or six years ago. And if you remember, I think it was like 2013, it was during a stretch of terrorist attacks that included the Boston Marathon bombing. I, I just couldn't take it anymore. I felt like I was losing my grip. I felt weak, scared, and definitely not connected to my higher source. I was allowing myself to be too connected to events, allowing them to affect my very soul. But after some serious meditating and soul searching, I was reconnected with my higher source and oneness. And I realized that while I thought I knew what acceptance meant, I really didn't. You see, acceptance doesn't mean that you necessarily agree with what might happen in the world. It means that you see it through the eyes of oneness. You understand that it is part of the collective consciousness. And because you accept it within those confines, you will not allow it to affect your being. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you shouldn't feel sorrow in your heart when you see the news of a terrorist attack somewhere. Of course you should. That's oneness because we're all connected. But if it leads you to thoughts of hatred, that's not oneness. And that's where acceptance comes in. Thoughts of hatred or any negative thoughts don't empower you or anyone else. They weaken you and in turn weaken us all collectively because of oneness and stevils. And because we've learned that what we think about expands, we now, we now know how important our thoughts really are. And that is why our overall objective is for more peaceful thoughts that will emanate out into the world and be part of the new collective consciousness. So it is typically at this time in our lives that we start to notice a shift. I know I did. How we lived up until that point served a different purpose. In most cases, that purpose was ego-driven and, and fueled our false identity. But now, knowing that as spiritual beings having a human experience, our purpose is solely, and note that I'm spelling it S-O-U-L-L-Y, our purpose is solely to serve. Because we pay more attention to what we used to call intuition.
because we now know that it is our higher self guiding us in some way. And let me tell you, folks, that is so very cool, like when you get more involved in recognizing your your intuitive feelings and nudges, because everyone feels them, everyone get, gets them at, at different times of their lives. They've always been a part of our lives. And it's just that now we know what they stand for and who they're from. They'll never steer you wrong because they come from a source of love. Your source of love. My source of love. The same source that makes this world of ours spin. Understanding oneness opens that channel and allows us to have a dialogue of sorts with our higher source. Now there are so many ways for us to serve in our lives and the key is is to let your intuition guide you. For we are all here with specific roles to fill. Please do not ever think that you're not. For you are. As you become more comfortable with oneness, that role or purpose will present itself to you. Initially, you might find yourself, hey, just opening doors for people. Or maybe being more grateful than you have in the past. Simple things like that are an indication that you're staying connected more. Also, this is something important too. Pay homage to your imagination. Do not think for one second that anything you can imagine is not attainable. What is our imagination? It's just our thoughts. Or as you now know, part of, again, Stevels, S-T-E-V-L-S. For those who do not know, that stands for spirit, thought, energy, vibration, love, or soul. I use that as an acronym in the book, okay? Stevels. Because that's exactly what we are. So, if you imagine something, that is the groundbreaking ceremony. Because we know that what we think about expands. If thought becomes part of your subconscious, it is only a matter of time before it manifests into your reality. Now, Albert Einstein, as we know, is one of the greatest scientific minds of all time. He passed on so many great memorable quotes. But my two favorite were regarding imagination and oneness. First, Here's how Einstein explained imagination. Now, check this out. It's so cool. He said, Imagination is more important than knowledge, for knowledge is limited, whereas imagination embraces the entire world, stimulating progress, giving birth to evolution. Now, come on. How cool is that, right? And now, check this out. Listen to what Einstein had to say about oneness. It goes like this. A human being is part of the whole, called by us, universe. He experiences himself, his thoughts, and feelings as something separated from the rest, a kind of optical delusion of his consciousness. This delusion is a kind of prison for us, restricting us to our personal desires and to affection for a few persons nearest to us. Our task must be to free ourselves from this prison by widening our circle of compassion to embrace all living creatures and the whole of nature in its beauty. Now, come on, how sweet is that? And from a great scientist, no less. You see, I especially love it when individuals like Einstein from the world of science speak in these terms because so many others within that realm choose not to relate to a concept like oneness. For one reason or another, they won't entertain the thought that we're all connected. They look for external proof or scientific data because that is how they're wired. And that's cool. I understand that. I also have to think that in most cases, 
those same individuals lean toward uh, atheistic values, maybe, and not even towards a spirituality at all. I don't know. I could be wrong with that, but I would think along those lines. So again, folks, I revert to my adage that I placed in the beginning of the book where I say, my way is not the way. It is simply a way. It is simply a way. But when scientists see one of their own, and Einstein kind of leads the way, right, go public with words regarding oneness that dispute what they've studied and practiced for so long, how is that not a first-class endorsement for oneness, right? And hopefully comments like that will pave the way for other scientific minds to get on board. Now, I tried to recall when I first started to notice those intuitive nudges that I was speaking about, and that actually led me on my path toward oneness. It was decades ago. I remember that um, in my early 20s, when I got out on my own, I started to notice that for one reason or another, I cared more about other people. I guess it had to do with living by myself and having to tend to everything. It made me appreciate everything that up until that point my parents did for me. You know, something inside me sensed that if I had to do everything on my own from this point forward, maybe I should try to align myself better with one and all. I was already reading you know, all the Wayne Dyer books at that time. And I was trying to figure out a lot of things regarding my life and thoughts specifically. I noticed that I became very much concerned with the welfare of children in general. Why, though? Right? I didn't know at the time, but I became increasingly concerned for their future. And I especially had concerns for children who were sick and suffering. I also noticed my my feelings and appreciation towards our elders, that was changing dramatically. Like, not sympathetically, but more from a point of empathy. For I realized that they had so much life and wisdom to share, but in so many cases, it would go unnoticed, where they had no one to share it with. And this was around the same time that I found myself with an immense concern for the plight of our United States veterans. I didn't know why. All I knew was that every story I read or news clip I saw on TV depicting their struggles got me so upset. Now, as you know, I am not a veteran. My dad is, and I have many uncles, cousins, and friends who have served. And every time someone would ask me why I have such concern for our veterans, I would always answer with the same words, because I would never have the guts to do what they did. And because of that, I have the utmost respect for all of our veterans. And when I see all that they have to go through just to get their basic needs filled, it truly breaks my heart. So those are just my examples of how I heeded the intuition that I sensed early in my life. Again, I don't know why. I just knew that I had to pay attention to the intuitive feelings I was getting and that I had to act on them. I still advocate for our children, our seniors, our veterans in many ways to this day, as well as our Mother Earth and music and the arts in general. Following my gut, as they say, has always been a way of life for me, especially as I came to terms with oneness. I knew that it was my higher source guiding me, so I had to follow its lead. I like to say that it's a dance, if you may. In the same way that you would dance with a partner, you need to dance with your intuition. As I discussed early in the book, your higher source is very much your partner. You need to accept the intuition and dance with it. Make it an accept dance. Hey, wait a second. There's another play on words that I like. Acceptance 
is an accept dance. I think I'm going to go out with that. Maybe hashtag accept dance. I said it first, guys. Don't steal it. <laughs> so as I, as I close out this, this episode that I'm titling Where Oneness Leads, I hope I have painted a picture as to where it might lead you. As you know by now, although we are all one, we are individualized expressions of that one. And that leads us back to talk about our choices. For the choices we make throughout our lives will dictate where oneness leads for each of us. I shared my own examples of how following the intuitive nudges I received led me to make specific choices that in turn opened my life up to specific aspects of oneness. Each one of those choices became a foundation of oneness for me that I was able to build my life upon, and it still continues. Again, do not put any undue pressure on yourself. Remember that we're trying to relieve some of the stress and pressure in your life. Oneness is here. It is a part of you. It is not going away. You will tap into it at your own specific time and place. You don't have to feel the need to get it sooner rather than later. Hey, I'm 57 years old and I'm still coming to terms with it. Our journeys have no timetables or deadlines to meet. Like I always say, and you know, life just is. Just remain receptive to the signs and nudges you'll receive that will come to you as intuition. In other words, make yourself available to where oneness leads. So, thank you again for listening to the podcast I'm calling That Oneness Guy. This has been episode number 12 where oneness leads if you've liked what you've been listening to please by all means take a moment to subscribe to this feed either on my website dannyarango.com at itunes apple podcasts google play spotify stitcher or at my uh, podcast website which is buzzsprout and just search for that oneness guy and know that as an extra bonus this podcast has been added to all of your smart home devices so all you need to do is, is just give a shout out to Alexa or Siri and say, play that oneness guy to listen anywhere in your homes. And please, again, follow me, folks, on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook so you can stay in touch with all things oneness. And especially my book, again, I Am God and So Are You, My Friend, A Common Man's Guide to Oneness, which, as I mentioned earlier, is now available everywhere. And if you get a chance, again, please go to the website for my book. Again, IamGodBook.com. It's really cool. It's an inter interactive site. I've got plenty of photos, videos, uh, also a blog that, you know, like if you sign up with your email, you can chime into and be, and be part of the conversation. I like to post a blog usually once or so a week. You know, so please, by all means, check that out. And uh, finally... If you live in New Jersey, I have been having book signing events at various Barnes & Noble stores. So please stay in touch with my websites for those events as I would so love to meet you. Again, my name is Danny Rongo. Please look for my next show. And until then, I send you, as always, peace, love, light, and continued oneness. Namaste. Set them high on love Set them high on love Just set them high on love And set them high on love Just set them high on love On love And set them high on love Set them high on love Just set them high on